I look at AOC in the same way that I look at some of the comedians the, that I see working today, and that is enthusiasm over skill. Do you, do you get that impression also, to, that, that there's a, a real draw toward the enthusiastic and the authentic as opposed to the craft, like actually working through things? Well, the, the craft, I think, is, oh, listen, there's some guys who are beautiful technicians, and they, they, they literally would do syllable counts and peel it back. But something, the, the main directive, obviously, with comedy has always been getting laughs. Now, you can go out and do it in a myriad of ways. There are physical comedians. There are, uh, you know, intellectual comedians. You, you see some guys, and you think, wow, that's so smart. But for the most part, it, it's all about the prime directive of getting laughs. I've noticed the change is more tectonic uh, in that it's turned everybody's comedy act almost into an impersonator act. Like impressionists used to do, they go, what if uh, Jack Nicholson was working at the Burger King? And I was always bridal. I had that, I lacked that gene where I could go with that, where I'd say, time out, he's one of the highest paid actors in the world. <laughs> I, why is he working at a fast food place? You know, I couldn't even go there. But they do it, and then at the end, people applaud. And that's sort of what humor is now. Like people will make a bold statement and get applause instead of big laughs. That's weird to me. It, it's sort of a short circuited the primal thing that it's an involuntary gesture where somebody says something funny and you don't have to intellectualize it. You just find yourself. <laughs> and that's the cool part of it. Now it's people going, hmm. And yeah. so that's a big change for comedy. The, the, the term that I've heard used about this is clapter, that people are not actually <laughs> laughing perfect. anymore. They're just, they're, they're clapping. And this is the Hannah Gadsby version of comedy where you have think pieces now about why for thousands of years we've actually been getting the entire concept of comedy wrong. It's not that we're supposed to laugh at things. It's supposed to, if we laugh at things, it's actually bad. We're supposed to think about things. And then the thinking is the humor. It yeah. seems to me that we are reshifting the entire nature of humanity around what a bunch of, very politically driven people want it to be because, I mean, I'm old enough to remember when Jay Leno was on television and trying to be funny, and now you've got people on TV in late night who I don't even know if they're trying to be funny anymore. I mean, legitimately. They, I think that Fallon may be the only late night host who's even making an occasional attempt to be funny. I don't know what your, your opinion is of the, of the well, current late night I think Jimmy's a great entertainer, and uh, I, I like that about him. I, uh, I think that you have to understand if you want to at some point, you would lose those jobs if you, uh, look, look how good Jimmy is at it, Jimmy uh, Fallon. I, uh, I've been on Jimmy Kimmel. He was nice to me, so I don't, I don't have an ax to grind there. I disagree with him on many things, but he's also a droid at it in his, in his own way. But Jimmy's the entertainer to me. Look how much trouble he got in for a simple hair fluff with Donald Trump. It's almost over for him at that point. Really, he's had the rally. And... There is an individual's choice at some point to keep a great job. Now, listen, you, you can say you should make your statement, you should speak your mind. If you're a 45-year-old Jimmy Fallon, who seems like a delightful guy, the times I've met him over the years, good kid, makes me laugh off stage, deadly funny. Uh, he's got the catbird seat. He hosts what Johnny Carson used to do. They didn't even make him leave from New York. He he's, loves New York. He's probably knocking off thirty to thirty million dollars a year all in. And they say to you, "Well, listen, no more pro-Trump stuff, or uh, we're gonna. This is they won't even state it, but it's right. like the old mob hit movies where they compartmentalize it. They'll have to deal with you with extreme prejudice. <laughs> you would eventually not have that gig." Uh, it's it's just the truth. You couldn't go out. Jimmy could not go out there now and espouse anything on that side. I think at that point it's uh, what would Deion Sanders whenever he does NFL football, somebody won't like stretch out for a pass. They'll like short arm it mm -hmm. so they don't get lit up. And Deion Sanders, you know, business decision. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the purest thing of uh, at some point you have to understand the hierarchy would whack you if you went out every night and uh, did a. Pro-Trump show. The, 